All right. Part four. A lot to cover, huh? With after treatment. Just when you thought it's easy. So it'd be nice that a lot of technicians and working shops would know how this after treatment. So if you're a shop tech, I thank you because you're actually trying to learn it right. So therefore, hopefully this will help you. And and by the way, for a little bit, I don't know my background. You know, I've worked in the community college. I've been a, you know, a, a, a department chair. I've been a corporate instructor. So therefore, and I've also worked as a mechanic and a shop owner. So don't think that uh, Tony just BSs his life through. He tries to get things right. And if I don't get them right, I'll say I'm sorry and I'll correct myself. So, so let's move on with after treatment. Um, thought I'd show you part four. So let's get going here. Let me get my presentation here. And she's not cooperating. Of course, she's not cooperating. There we go. There we go. Part four. Again, if you're new to part four and you haven't seen one, two, or three, come on, watch part one, then two, and three. You know, we're trying to keep them as short as possible. I'm trying to go over 30 minutes. I'm trying to keep it under 20 minutes, but I get going into them. So, all right. Um, we last talked about in part three about regeneration. Yeah, regeneration. So in this case, regeneration is the process of burning the soot, right? So we saw this slide in part three. And in this case, there were three types of regeneration, manual, active, and passive. We already talked about that. We saw that, again, that the regenerations occur, occur above, above 970 degrees Fahrenheit. We also mentioned about the lights. Again, that's why you got to watch one, two, and three, part one, two, and three, because we talked about these lights, right? So we mentioned about the check engine light, and we also talked about the SCR light, which is for NOx. We also mentioned in the beginning that the two major emissions we're going after in the use of after treatment is to reduce NOx and to reduce what? The soot, collect the soot, better known as the particulate matter. So in this case, you know, when we teach classes to technicians, we tell them, you know, you got to look at the big picture. And I said this in part one and two as well, that do we understand what a check, uh, check engine light means? It means that there's a diagnostic trouble code set. And then do we understand what the other light is, which is the SER light? What's it for is because A, it hasn't been able to reduce NOx emissions, or B, it hasn't been able to verify there's adequate NOx reduction. So remember what I just said, because I'm going to show you a slide here coming up. So in this case, when we talk about diagnosis, we have to have a flow of understanding, better known as a strategy. How are you going to diagnose? Do you have a strategic approach? In other words, when I come in and I'm diagnosing, I'm going to open the hood. And what am I going to always do first? Now, we have something that I talk about, and I'll talk about this later in diagnosis, is something called, which I call the scan tool stupids. In other words, a technician will see the check engine light on, and immediately he wants to scan it. Let me get one thing clear here. For those of you that are do-it-yourselfers or barely getting to understand your truck or your car, whatever, if a computer was so smart, I wouldn't have a job. Hey, Tony, can you hook up the scan tool and see if it'll tell you what's wrong with the truck? Let me tell you, if it was that smart, I wouldn't be here on YouTube and people wouldn't be struggling. No, the computer's not that smart. They're getting pretty damn smart, but not always. That's why I laugh at those commercials and those infomercials where they say, oh, you can hook up this little puck, you connect it to the diagnostic interface, you hook it up to your laptop, it's going to tell you most likely what's wrong. No, our job as a good working technician that knows his stuff is to find out what the problem is. So I know that if I got a check engine light on, that means a test has failed. That's what a diagnostic trouble code is, is a test. So therefore, we know the test has failed. But what about when the check engine light's not on and you got the SCR light on? So again, just to recap your brain there, see, you can see the SCR light and the mill light. So therefore, we tell guys, start off with the basics, you know, open the hood. Let's see what the oh, air filters, you know, we showed you an example of that. Air filters can be a problem. What's the condition of the air? Or maybe you got this fleet truck from, a, you know, let's say it's a plumbing fleet truck or a, some kind of landscaping truck and they pour death fluid into the diesel fuel, but they won't tell anybody. Maybe they poured half a quart, maybe a gallon, whatever they screw up, they think they can get away with it. That can cause issues. The engine oil, has it ever been changed? How long has it been, has been changed? What good oil are they using, you know? You know, check for crankcase, blow by, turbo, fuel and smoke, uncork the exhaust, like I talked about uncorking the exhaust earlier on one and two. In other words, find the cause of how well, because you, the job is, is that engine running at optimum levels? So with that said, we've been showing this slide over and over again to keep your mind fresh. 
Again, we see the oxidation catalyst, we saw the SER catalyst, and we see the DPF, and we see the reductant or deaf fluid injector, better known as AdBlue, for those of you guys on across the pond, as they say, in Europe. But when we look at the diesel oxidation catalyst, again, right here, on the inlet side, we often get what we call a carbon wall. These are for trucks that do a lot of idle time. They sit there and idle all day long. Maybe, you know, like the trucks I see at the local um the Harry Reid Airport here in Las Vegas, you know, we see that they add all day long and they're diesel. So therefore, what's going to happen to that particular filter if it sits there and idles all day long, like an emergency vehicle, a fire truck, paramedic truck, we see that carbon forms on the inlet. That's how cold it is. And in, 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 in engineering talk, they call it, it's a quenching effect. And as I zoom up, I don't know if you can see it. I hope it comes out pretty good in the video, but it kind of is like paper, uh, potato chip thin, so thin of layer or carbon there. But if you understand carbon, carbon loves fuel. So as the carbon is accumulated, because what you're looking at, once again, is you're looking at the inlet of a diesel oxidation cow. This is a truck that we had once. And the problem was as fuel's going downstream from host injections, or maybe there's a direct inject, indirect injector squirting fuel like a Duramax, it won't get hot at all. It won't do that reaction. So again, we said that regeneration is the process of burning the soot, right? So in this case, it's going to get nice and hot over 970 degrees, but that's a chemical reaction that occurs within the oxidation catalyst. So if you didn't get it, let me recap again. When we squirt fuel, like on this power stroke 6.7, it runs post injections on the driver's side cylinders. So fuel will come down that downpipe after the turbo, and it's gonna chemically react with that oxidation catalyst and create that hellacious amount of heat over 970 degrees towards the SER and the particulate filter. So it's gonna heat the SER catalyst and it's also gonna burn the soot in the particulate filter. Again, over 970 degrees. So in part three at the end, I showed you how hot it can get using the scan tool readings. So therefore we can form that carbon wall. So with that carbon wall, you know, what are you gonna do? Well, you gotta take it off and you gotta send it out for cleaning because again, it's so cold that it never got an ability to run a regeneration. So the truck will come in with various particular filter efficiency codes with not reaching proper temperature, anything related to the diesel particular filter. Now, the other light, which was the Knox light, right? Here's a good example of a Ram Dodge application right here. And somewhere on the lower there on the lower left, there is that light we talked about also, which is again, your SCR light. So we saw the GM version of it, and now we're looking at the Ram Dodge. So again, that's telling again, you the technician that there is inadequate NOx reduction, it ain't reducing NOx, or again, it hasn't been able to verify that there's inadequate NOx reduction. Now, since so some cases, the ones that we get really bad, you know, like this Ram Dodge here, this is another model, this was a tow truck here, and it was already derated. And what I mean by that is we have a check engine light. We got the SER light illuminated too as well. There's my SER light. There's my check engine light. I know I got a problem here in this truck because there's a check engine light. So again, a diagnostic trouble code must be set. And at that point, I know that a test has failed. So it's related most likely to the SER system. Now, just because I got those codes doesn't mean I'm not going to check the condition of the engine. How's that engine running? Does it have exhaust leaks? Does it have AGR issues? Are there other codes? Are there other issues? So once again, repeating myself, you cannot diagnose an after-treatment problem until you verify that the engine is running properly, okay? So this truck has 196,000 miles, as you can see on the odometer reading. I don't know how well this engine's been, you know, serviced. I don't know if it's, you know, so just by running, if it's running like dog crap, I mean, it's running horrible. It's running on five cylinders or five and a half cylinders because it's an inline six. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at that, you know, so. All right, so we saw this guy earlier on the previous part two and three. So here you can see, now I'm gonna tell you what we did to fix it. I didn't say before, now we're gonna show you how we fixed it. Once again, the truck came in with it being threatened. So let me get my zoom feature here. Again, for those of you who don't remember seeing it in the previous part one and part two, part three, there it is. Speed will be limited to 50 miles per hour in 44 miles. And there's your SER message rate. However, like I said before, the truck is idling in this picture. You see that? And you're going to see there's no check engine light. So no test has failed. So in this case, why is it threatening, again, to go to 50 miles per hour? And if it's still not going to be happy, it's going to go to eventually to idle. So with that said, I know 
that I got an SER problem, meaning your deaf fluid stuff. But I know that the SER is saying that there is an adequate NOx reduction or it hasn't been able to verify there is NOx reduction. Hear that correctly. So there's a pre and post NOx sensors for those of you who didn't watch the previous version. So in this case, we've got a NOx sensor before the whole exhaust system and one after that exhaust after treatment system. So he's looking at the NOx levels before and after, see if it did reduce the SER system, the NOx. All right. So in this case, I know, and repeating again, that this slide is telling me one of two things. Repeating. Yes, I do repeat a lot. That there is inadequate NOx reduction or it hasn't been able to verify there's adequate NOx reduction. So with that said, I know that there is adequate, it hasn't been able to verify because of the fact that there's no check engine light. If there was a failure in the SCR system, whether being the reductant injector, whether being the pump, whether being the diverting valve, a whole slew of components in that SCR system, it would have had a check engine light. So what did I simply do? Well, what we did was, let me backtrack on this. What we did is, let me mute this so I don't hear myself talking, is we went ahead and ran a regeneration event. So here you can see the truck running. And what I just simply did is, and I'm showing that again, is that I went ahead, let me fast forward here, is that we ran a regeneration event. Now, it had 56% suit loading, which was good enough to run a regeneration. But what I'm doing is the regeneration is, is going, it's getting hot and hot and hot and hot, as I recorded several different times. But towards the end here, as I was running the regeneration, I go ahead and I'm showing you that the message is now gone. Look at that. The message is now gone. So therefore, it actually turned the threat of reducing to 50 miles per hour off. Because by me running a regeneration manually with the scan tool on this truck, not only did I burn soot, but I also heated that SER catalyst to actually convert, and in other words, to convert that NOx into friendly gases, which is nitrogen, water, carbon monoxide, and so on, carbon dioxide, excuse me. So in this case, the, how did we fix this truck? Is was simply running a regeneration. Now you're probably scratching your head. Hold on, Tony, wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me see this again. Here we can see again that it has no check engine light on, so there's no test that has failed, but the deaf fluid or SCR, like, like you guys like to call it, is on. Once again, it is on. But if you remember in the previous sessions that I talked here on YouTube, I said you need heat to convert the deaf fluid to ammonia. So when deaf fluid is injected, it readily converts that deaf fluid, which is a solution of 32.5%, of urea mixed with water and it changes it to ammonia. It is the ammonia that breaks up the NOx, which is oxides of nitrogen, nitrogen and oxygen. So we want to change that into friendly gases, which is nitrogen, oxygen, water, and carbon dioxide. So therefore, what did it need that caused this threat to go away was the fact that it needed heat. So one of the messages that's important for you to understand, especially you guys in cold country, is that after treatment requires heat in order for it to work to reach those catalyst light off temperatures. Okay, so hopefully that covers that. All right, so this is a quickie. Just want to make sure you understood. I didn't want to talk too much about it, but in this case, we need heat in order to run a passive regeneration or to maybe turn off the light. This has happened to me many times with trucks coming in where it's threatened or it's already derated because a truck will derate to 50 miles an hour and eventually to idle. So can we get trucks that are towed in that are idle all because it did not get hot enough? So one of the things I can do is I can run a regeneration. Well, here's the problem with that. Duramax L5Ps, that won't work. If this was a Duramax, it wouldn't work. This works on a Ram Dodge. It works on many other diesels. But on a Duramax GM Sierra GM truck that has an L5P, this does not work because of the fact that the direct indirect injector is way downstream. So I'll talk about that in a later half. Let's not, let's just learn a little bit at a time. So hopefully you learned this about this SCR light. All right. Remember, you cannot diagnose. I know I'm repeating again. I know I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Is you cannot Re fix issues with the after treatment if that engine is running like crap. 
It's got to be running at optimum levels, like I've said over and over again. All right. Hopefully this has helped you. Short and sweet one. I appreciate you continuing to watch. Hopefully it'll make you smarter at understanding how after treatment systems at work. Comment. Give it a thumbs up. You know, subscribe. That'd be nice. Help pay more of the bills. With that, I appreciate you watching. God bless. Until next time.